When is an oyster not an oyster? When it's an oyster mushroom. Mushrooms and medicine, the mushrooms and medicine, the Mycophobia seems more common here in the United States than in European and Asian countries, where mushrooming is often a family pastime. It's certainly understandable why some folks are hesitant to eat wild mushrooms. Instead, they may prefer to harvest them from their local farmer's markets or grocery shelves. That's a good way to help identify mushrooms, like these oysters, which are often found in the wild. If you decide to gather your own mushrooms, be wise, cautious, safe, and 100% sure of their identity, since there are several deadly ones. I remember a time not so long ago when mushrooms were thought to have little or no nutritional value. Not so today. Now many, including oysters, are considered to have medicinal properties as well as edible ones. They're high in protein, vitamins, and probably have other benefits. Oyster mushrooms are named for how they look, not for how they taste. They're found in overlapping clusters on decomposing deciduous hardwood tree trunks, or stumps. These clumps are easy to spot since they grow off the ground. Their smooth caps can be as large as four inches or smaller. Their colors vary from white, gray, brown, and shades in between, which distinguishes them from the bark of their host tree. Often caps of those that appear in colder weather are darker brown. Oysters have white gills on their undersides, which continue along the stem. If still unsure about their identification, make a spore print. Place half of a mushroom cap, gill side down, on white paper and half on black so that if the mushroom has white spores they'll show up. Here's a close-up of whitish lilac spores on the dark paper. Nothing showed up on the white one. These spore prints remind me of a whirling tornado. Notice the white spores on this one dropped onto it from a mushroom that was above it. What a difference a day makes. Two days ago, these fruiting bodies of oyster mushrooms were just starting to appear. The next day, they were much larger, and I harvested most of them. I would have liked to wait one more day when they'd be even bigger, but a rain and windstorm threatened to stir up dirt onto their undersides. I get these from a tree stump I call Old Faithful because... In spite of its small size and girth, it never fails to produce many crops of oysters in the spring, summer, fall, and even winter. When it's hot outside, get oysters as soon as they appear, because insects like them, and probably you don't want that type of extra protein mixed in with your harvest. In the colder months, they're less likely to have buggy infestations. Use a sharp knife to gather them. If there's any dirt, it's a good idea to scrape it off with a knife or very gently remove specks with your finger before placing your mushrooms in a paper, wax, or mesh bag. A basket also works. Plastic bags are a no-no as they cause mushrooms to sweat, which makes them vulnerable to bacteria. Before I go inside, I put them gill side up in the sun for up to an hour to increase their vitamin D content. Any longer may cause them to dry out. This container says it all. It's especially important to refrigerate them so they won't become mushy rooms. I always cook all mushrooms because their fruiting bodies contain chitin, which, when eaten raw, is indigestible by humans. First, wash them off with a fine sprayer. 
I like to separate these oysters into smaller parts by hand. They pull apart like string cheese. Dry saute them in a pan to rid them of any excess moisture. A tasty combination is to cook them in butter along with diced garlic, chopped pecan or hickory nuts, and pre-cooked wild rice. This is an unusual side dish to serve to dinner guests. Another of my favorite possibilities is to roast them. Place the oysters in a bowl and marinate them with olive oil, garlic powder, pepper, and salt. Arrange on parchment paper. Put in a preheated 375 degree oven and bake for about 10 to 15 minutes until they become brown and caramelized. Smaller pieces turn crispy quicker, so remove them before the larger ones are ready. I'm sure there are many more ways to experiment with these versatile mushrooms. As with any new food, eat these in moderation. Take a small amount to see if your digestive system can handle it or not. To freeze them, saute for eight minutes, cool, then place in the freezer. Once frozen, pack them into jars. When ready to use, don't thaw them. Just toss into a hot buttered pan. Dry oysters in a dehydrator in the sun or spread out on a sheet in a cool room. Since I didn't cook these before drying, they should be used only in cooked dishes. Reconstitute the dried mushrooms in room temperature water. Their texture may be chewy, so it's best to place them in soups and let the broth bring out their flavor. I also blend some of the dried ones to make a powder. I sprinkle a small amount into various recipes, like this stew. Store this in an airtight jar in the fridge. Mid-October is a prime time to find many mushrooms. Some are edible like oysters, but many aren't. Here are two inedible look-alikes. I haven't come across them, but just in case. First is angel wings. Controversial because once they were considered edible, but now they're on the iffy list. Because of this, I don't recommend them. They prefer to grow on conifers, which oysters don't, are thinner and don't grow in dense layers. Then there is Crepidotus, which appear most often as individuals, have a brown spore print and no stem. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's absolutely imperative to properly identify any fungus you plan on eating. Misidentification can lead to gastric distress or worse. So how can you be sure of proper ID? The book How to Forage for Mushrooms Without Dying is a humorous and informative introduction to the fungal world, especially for beginners. And don't miss the film Fantastic Fungi, an exploration to the magnificent, mystical, mysterious, and medicinal fungal world. Or check in with the Mycological Association. If you live in the United States, you can find one near you. Go to the North American Mycological Association's website for a list of all the clubs in the country, plus Canada and Mexico. It's full of fun guys and fun gals. And lastly, another way, at least in regard to oysters, is to watch this video. Mushrooms and medicine. Mushrooms and medicine.